welcome. It is my privilege to congratulate all of you on behalf of the Farmingdale College Council. Today, you are living in challenging times, very uncertain times, but there is one thing that is certain. Farmingdale State College has prepared you for all that you will encounter tomorrow. Whatever you do, you have received a quality education. Now, you already face the world. You're going to help solve the problems. You're going to help invent some new technologies. I hope that when you achieve great things, that you will continue to be as proud of Farmingdale State College as we will be of you. Thank you again and congratulations. On behalf of the Farmingdale State College community, welcome to our winter graduation event. This is certainly not the commencement ceremony any of us wanted, but it is one that I hope you will remember. I have never been prouder of a graduating class. Today, more than ever, this day is your day, and it remains a time for celebration. Individually and collectively, your achievements, your drive, your work ethic say all that we need to know about this class. You have persisted and succeeded during the most difficult time in the modern history of higher education. Your stories and experiences are nothing short of inspiring. So my brief remarks will draw largely from the words of our graduating students to tell the story of your class. I've done that by quoting from portions of the essays of our valedictorians, as well as drawing on the written comments of other graduating seniors who've reflected on their experience. These stories and yours are the best testimonials to the transformation experienced by so many of you. These students and many others had academic success while serving others or working countless hours to help support themselves or their families. Listen, please, to what these students say about one another and their professors. One arts and sciences student wrote, this school offered the most ideal learning environment for me. As a result, I was able to utilize the more intimate classroom settings and easily accessible professors to best develop my academic career. I was fortunate enough to be instructed by Professor Douglas, who would soon become one of my mentors, and with his guidance, I persevered. I developed a mentorship with Professor Mata, who would have a significant influence on my decision to pursue a law degree. I would speak with Dr. Cruz, who was always accessible and willing to speak with me about any personal matters. Being exposed to a diverse group of students provided insightful class discussions emphasizing alternative perspectives. To be surrounded by such a tight-knit community allowed me to engage in more meaningful discourse with others. A business student wrote, the amazing faculty constantly challenged me to think about problems in different ways and analyze problems from multiple perspectives. On several occasions, I was assigned to defend positions on issues that I was against in order to hone my analytic skills. This forced me to go beyond my comfort zone but improved my insight into problems and how understanding multiple perspectives comes into play. In addition, I learned the value of negotiation and achieving a common objective. I also gained invaluable experience as to what it takes to be a leader. I've received acceptance letters from several master's degree programs, and I'm extremely grateful to the Farmingdale community for the role they played in helping me advance to the next step. A student graduating from the School of Engineering Technology wrote, Farmingdale has changed the trajectory of my life for the better. I've made great friends and learned some of the, from some of the most outstanding professors I will ever have. As of last week, I was admitted to pursue a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering. I would not have achieved this success without the assistance of Farmingdale and the letters of recommendation prof from Professors Hong, Elgin, and Seiler. I really appreciate the support they have given me. This school has given me the knowledge and work ethic to follow my dreams. I had no idea where my life was heading when I started at Farmingdale. A health science graduate writes, it did not take long for me to identify the nursing program as the program of my dreams. This program appealed to me so much because of its rigorous coursework, intimate class sizes, high standards, and firm commitment to excellence. Since gaining admission 
<clears throat> I have upheld my GPA while also working as a patient care associate. I've been a frontline worker in my hospital's intensive care unit during the pandemic and a volunteer for our campus initiative to test students, faculty, and staff for COVID. Throughout my time, I've met many outstanding individuals and have learned, grown, and experienced more than I could ever have helped, hoped for. One senior wrote, the professors here are so incredibly helpful and talented. It's truly been a privilege to have received the education and guidance and support from them. I knew nothing about graphic design when I started, and now in my senior year, I cannot believe all that I've learned. The professors understand how competitive the industry is, and they really want to offer as much advice and feedback as they can to help us succeed. Another wrote, Farmingdale is an amazing school and is continuously growing. I'm thankful for the opportunities that were offered to me. I plan to come back after I finish a doctorate to teach a nursing course at this school. And among 45 students who were recently honored with SUNY's EOP Award for Student Excellence, the one who was selected to speak on behalf of those students is graduating today from Farmingdale. That person came here receiving a 2016 Beat the Odds Scholarship, and he recently said to me, it was a great adventure to go to FSC. You may have noticed that I have mentioned no student by name. That's because these are not uncommon stories. In fact, what this class has in common is an uncommon diligence and perseverance. Each and every student graduating today is a student who completed their last semesters under circumstances that no one could have imagined a year ago. Even more impressive is that 70% of you worked for pay while you pursued your degree. Let me put that in context. You work in far greater numbers than students at comparable colleges, and you work nearly twice the number of hours of students at those institutions. Furthermore, an FSC senior is likely to spend twice as much time caring for a dependent child or parent than students at other similar colleges. Few things are more ultimately satisfying than a triumph over adversity or completing a particularly difficult challenge. Your commitment to learning and working and serving others is a daily occurrence. Keep in mind that many of you today are that much needed bright light at what might otherwise be a dark time for friends or family. If we have learned anything, it is how strong and resilient you are. I will end where I began. This is not the commencement any of us envisioned, and yet it may be a singularly memorable graduation because of what you've attained under these terrible circumstances. I hope that each of you takes the time to fully appreciate what you've achieved by finding a safe and enjoyable way to share your pride with family and friends who've helped you make it along the way. I wish you every success in the years ahead. We as a faculty and staff have never been prouder of a graduating class. The gloom of 2020 will give way to brighter days. It will get better. Congratulations. Congratulations to all of the Farmingdale State College graduates who worked tirelessly, remotely, and through unimaginable circumstances to get to this point right now, winter commencement. Let me be the first to welcome you to the alumni community of more than 100,000 who came before you. Although this year has been unlike any other, my sentiments remain the same. I urge you to stay connected to your alma mater, keep in touch with your classmates, and share with us your good news and accomplishments. Give back when you are able to, and be proud of your achievement as a Farmingdale graduate. I encourage you to check our website frequently and follow us on social media so you know when we are hosting events, when we are looking for volunteers to assist our current students, and stay informed with what is happening at the college. As you continue on your journey beyond Farmingdale, on behalf of the entire FSC Alumni Association, I wish you much success, health, and happiness. Congratulations once again on your graduation from Farmingdale State College. Good afternoon. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the School of Health Sciences, I would like to offer my sincere congratulations on your graduation. You have reached this landmark in your life during some very, very difficult times. To graduate from any program in the School of Health Sciences requires years of effort, hard work, and dedication. But to graduate during this COVID pandemic required extra effort, 
required harder work and extra dedication. So let's go back to the last march. It seems like a little bit ago and it seems like an eternity ago. Classes in very short time went to online, the hygiene clinic was closed, hospital rotations were suspended, and laboratories were being offered by alternative means. Fast forward to current. All required classes have been offered via online, and I have observed a lot of these classes and have been quite impressed with their quality. Uh, the hygiene clinic has opened, hospital rotations and internships have been offered, and therefore all accreditation and licensure standards in the state have been met. Remarkable, since last March until now, you are graduating on time. I know I speak for all of health science graduates in thanking the faculty and staff for all their work in preparing you for this day. It hasn't been easy, hasn't been e easy for you, the graduates, and certainly it hasn't been easy for our wonderful faculty and staff. But as you progress in your career, you will see that failure to deliver quality health care is not an option. It isn't an option in hard financial times in times of hurricanes or other issues. It's just not an option regardless of the reasons. So finally, I appreciate your volunteering in a lot of different ways during the pandemic, from donating PPE to area hospitals, to training as contact tracers, to performing hundreds and hundreds of hours of COVID testing on campus. Your efforts have allowed Farmingdale State College to continue to educate our students. I've been really very much impressed. In conclusion, I wish you well as you leave Farmingdale. I know you have been well trained and somehow your COVID experiences will serve you well in the future. So to the COVID class of 2020, all of us are very proud of all of you. Thank you. The Hild Award Valedictorian Medal is presented each year to a graduate who excels in scholarship. This medal is awarded in memory of Hild Award, who was a valued benefactor of the college and an early member of the College Council. I'm proud to announce that the 2020 Winter Valedictorian for the Health Sciences will be graduating with a degree in nursing. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the 2020 Winter Valedictorian, Matthew Ragusa. Hi, my name is Matthew Ragusa, and as of today, I am a graduate of the nursing program here at Farmingdale State College. Before I get into my sappy and cliche speech, I want to start by giving an enormous congratulations to all of my peers for making it to the finish line of this long, arduous journey. And on behalf of my peers, I want to express our deep gratitude for all the faculty and staff who helped us to achieve our goals and become the people who we set out to be. Years ago, when we first started our journey towards becoming healthcare professionals, no one could have ever imagined the challenges of the world that we're living in today. On top of our rigorous coursework and the personal and professional struggles of everyday life, we have been thrown into a new age of challenge characterized by a global pandemic and widespread turbulence on all fronts. Although we face many daunting challenges, there is not a single doubt in my mind that we are ready and able to face them, work through them, and leave our world in a better place than we found it. I can say this with such confidence because when we chose to pursue a career in healthcare, we knew it would not be easy. We knew it might not be the most lucrative endeavor. And we knew that a career in healthcare would test us in ways that no other industry could, both figuratively and literally. Despite all of this, we still chose to continue down this difficult path because our desire to help others is far greater than any challenge or obstacle that may lie in our way. The same level of determination, resilience, and benevolence that brought us all here tonight will continue to carry and guide us through even the darkest of times. At the start of the speech, I promised you guys that I'd be cliche, and I'm not about to let you all down. And if I haven't already achieved that, I'll surely achieve it by citing a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi once said that the best way to find yourself is by losing yourself in the service of others. I discovered this quote a few years ago when I found it posted in a hospital unit break room. 
I was bogged down in the middle of a particularly difficult shift at the time, and I recall being instantly uplifted after reading Gandhi's altruistic message. I really fell in love with this quote for quite some time until I realized just how easy and common it is for healthcare workers to lose themselves in the service of others and not in a good way. Healthcare is an incredibly demanding field, and it's no wonder why healthcare workers are so hard on themselves. We want to do the best we can for our patients. We have high standards. Many of us are perfectionists, and we work within a system that has minimal tolerance for error. However, we are not robots, and we will make mistakes sooner or later. It is for this reason that we must be kind to ourselves. We must practice diligent self-care. We must embrace the fact that we are only human, and we must use our mistakes as tools for improvement rather than as ammunition for self-deprecation. At the same time, we must also be sure to not let our fear of failure or mistakes cripple us from pursuing our goals, dreams, and aspirations, because the things in life that are truly worth doing are often the ones that challenge and scare us the most. As humans, we naturally chase the mirage of getting to a point in life where adversity is minimal and pleasure is maximal. But the truth is that life will rarely be easy, and it will certainly never be completely free of challenges. And when we accept this principle, we are much better oriented to pursue meaningful lives in which we are truly happy and fulfilled. So may we do the things that are worth doing. Rise above the fear of failure and mistakes, care for ourselves with the same gusto that we care for others, and keep love and benevolence at the core of everything we do. By doing so, we can and we will tackle the challenges of today and the challenges of tomorrow. If I were to rephrase the quote I mentioned earlier, I'd say that you should dedicate your career and even your life to the service of others, but don't lose yourself in it, because when we are at our best, our patients are at their best, and that is why we're all here. Thank you and congratulations. Good evening and congratulations to the class of 2020. I am Dr. Laura Joseph, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Farmingdale State College. It has most certainly been an unprecedented year and through it all, you persevered. You displayed courage, conviction, and determination. The college administration and faculty are so very proud of your accomplishments. Farmingdale's focus on applied learning has provided you with a strong foundation on which to grow. Many of you took advantage of internship opportunities, while others engaged in faculty-led research experiences. The applied learning component of your education sets you apart from other graduates and provides you with the competencies you will need to continue your educational pursuits or enter the workforce. Regardless of what your next steps in life may be, know that you have what it takes to be successful. Your time at Farmingdale has prepared you well. Again, my heartfelt congratulations on a job well done. It is now my distinct honor and privilege to present the diploma candidates to President Nader, who will confer their degrees. President Nader, Subject to verification, these candidates for graduation have been recommended by the faculty as having completed requirements for the degrees of Associate in Arts, Associate in Applied Science, Associate in Science, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Technology, and Master of Science. Dr. Nader will now confer your degrees as graduates of Farmingdale State College. Congratulations. On behalf of the College Council and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York and by State University Chancellor Jim Malatris, I confer upon the successful candidates the degree of Associate of Applied Science and Bachelor of Science.